Hey, this is Arnav. Welcome to the channel. Today we'll be talking about the CryptoKitties project. Okay, so CryptoKitties project has become the most used Ethereum project in recent days, and it has made the whole Ethereum network quite slow because there are so many transactions that are taking place to the CryptoKitties smart contract. Okay, so in this video, I'll try to explain how the whole game works, CryptoKitties game works, how the whole white paper was set up, and what was the motivation behind the team, and how the whole product actually works out, and some interesting sites that you can look at to. be good at this game and some other useful things like how the breeding of the cats works how the whole smart contract is set up at etherscan okay so yeah let, without wasting any time let's talk crypto kitties together so <clears throat> crypto kitties uh, is a game in which you can buy cats and maybe in the hopes that you can sell them uh, at later at a good price okay so it is based on the project of uh, on the concept of digital scarcity and in which which states that if something is scarce and if there is demand for it and if it's increasing then the price will go up okay uh, so in the crypto kitties project you can choose to buy cats and you can <coughs> you can uh, enable uh, various sort of search feed functionality so if you go to youngest first so you have these cats which are uh, gen 5 gen 3 gen 4 and which have been just put down or for sale and you can even go for cheapest first so if you go for cheapest first you find these cats which are available and this is the price in ethereum or ether so if you go down here uh, and th these cats have interesting bios so you have the cat name gen num gen number uh, which is generation 4 uh and the time left so basically this selling of the cat the owner who has put it on for sale has a start price and an end price and there's a descending clock auction so in this clock auction the price of the cat goes from the start price to the end price okay so it goes down uh, sequentially and it, it is divided the whole uh, decreasing in the price is divided according to the time okay <clears throat> that is put that it is put for, uh, for auction and so these cats even have the in, have interesting bios like uh, shalom uh, believes that the world is fat and sometimes i daydream of a life full of glaring at the not to do so these cats have actually interesting bios okay and uh, so and they even have cat attributes which are cat attributes and so this is kitten cream chocolate sphinx gray matter and so on and so forth and information regarding the parents like who reproduced to uh, give Birth to this cat and the children associated with this cat. Okay, so this is this cat number, and so you go to buy now, and okay, so it, you need to have MetaMask in, installed. MetaMask is this uh, feed button, is this Chrome extension. So uh, it allows a person to directly interact with Ethereum apps through the normal Chrome browser without installing a special type of browser which is meant for interaction with the Ethereum blockchain. So you can interact with uh, Ethereum apps using normal Chrome. So if I click on OK, buy this kitty. so uh, i i don't think so metamask would be visible but i have gotten one metamask window and i i just need to click on buy kitty and send some set up some gas uh, units and price and i will be able to buy this kitty okay so this is how the whole game works out and there are features like you can if you have a collection of kitties so if you go to my kitties so i don't have uh, any kitties right now but uh, i would have a collection of kitties here and i can uh, decide whether i want to sell them whether i want to may, uh, give them away for reproducing or maybe if i just want to hold them or hold on for dear life okay so this is how the whole game works out okay and now i'll talk about the whole uh, white paper of the game i'll go down to the white paper and so that one can understand what was the motivation behind the team and the whole project uh, how the whole project evolved with time okay so uh, okay so basically uh, in the initial part of the white paper they have this abstract and the main uh, motivation behind creating the project was to increase the interest of blockchain uh, among the masses so basically the masses can't actually differentiate between blockchain and cryptocurrencies and since there is lot of money involved in cryptocurrencies uh, clearly the interest of the masses is around cryptocurrencies instead of the blockchain technology and so many applications besides uh, cryptocurrencies that we can create uh, with blockchain technology so <clears throat> the motivation is to actually gamify features that leverage blockchain unique applications and an approachable consumer facing brand so basically 
kittens are very easy to identify for a normal person as well so an approachable brand is uh, was there also a motivation and <clears throat> an open platform uh, inclusive to users of all technical knowledge basically they didn't want to create a project which was too complex to use and a sustainable revenue based model so i will talk about how the whole revenue model works out and they are clearly not doing an ico for this uh, blockchain project at least so <clears throat> that was the abstract part uh, and again we'll have a repeat of the motivation so that as stated that public understanding of blockchain technology is limited to headline grabbing cryptocurrency valuations and ICOs basically, ICOs are a great funding tool, but they are being misused right now because of the lack of regulations. And so basically the team uh, tried to explore the concept of digital scarcity, digital collectibles and non-fungible tokens uh, in creating CryptoKitties game. Okay. So <clears throat> again, they go about public perception of blockchain and ICOs. Um, yeah. And so they, in this white paper, now they talk about uh, that there is a lot of potential in uh, digital collectibles but they, there are certain uh, limitations of why we aren't able to why we haven't been able to exploit their potential so uh, so far with the technology stack that we had uh, till now before blockchains so there are three main reasons why digital collectibles haven't reached their full potential first one is the central issuing authority and so this states that uh, so if say if we have a central issuing authority which is issuing all the digit, digital collectibles so um, and say we have a, some item maybe say um, a leather helmet and if that leather helmet demand increases a lot with time and people start associating value with it like okay leather or helmet is really nice uh, i i need one so the what the central authority will do it it will start making more leather helmets on the digital platform because it would want to increase its revenue and it will be able to increase the revenue but people who actually had that uh, leather helmet and maybe had found it to be really uh, great initially would find the rewards to get diminished because so much of leather helmets would be made by the issuing authority. So there's this trouble with central issuing authority and it diminishes the value of original collectibles or the like the most rare or popular collectibles and then there's this provider dependency so if if there is the whole central authority or central platform ceases to exist um, then the whole uh, value of all the digital collectible will cease to ex exist as well so there's always this trouble of provider dependency and most uh, importantly it's the lack of function so if someone buys an art so basically art sell for so much money they sell for 50 100 million dollars easily good pieces of art but they serve a purpose you can uh, hang those arts um, on your wall and show them to people that hey this is the art that I bought for 50 million dollars but digital collectibles assets don't serve any purpose till now okay so these were the limitations with uh, digital collectibles and uh, that, that is what the team had stated in the white paper as well um, yeah and people haven't aren't willing to invest in digital collectibles because of these reasons and now moving on to the product so the whole product is actually uh, consists of 50,000 generation zero cats so uh, these generation and zero cats are released after 15 minutes and they are unique in appearance and genes so basically the smart contract which is basically a contract put on code piece of code which is put on the ethereum blockchain has information for these 50,000 generation cat uh, gen zero cats and these uh, 50,000 generation zero cats are released after 15 minutes so 15 thousand into 15 is quite a lot of minutes till all the cats will be released okay and these cats are the most valuable uh, cats and yeah um, so and they are sold through an auction so this is the first fun functionality and uh, <clears throat> basically what we find is uh, there are two things called, known as uh, phenotype which refers to the unique appearance and the genotype uh, which refers to the whole uh, genes that a cat has and there's this even the product has this concept of breeding and uh, breeding is nice because it introduces a concept of random outcome and uh, there's this uh, concept like if two cats uh, breed we don't know what will come out next okay so there's this random functionality maybe there can be a thing that a cat is produced which has some very unique and great properties um, by breeding say very normal cats so uh, reading is is what gives this game life okay so <clears throat> and uh, yeah so that is what their goal was to uh, 
make the game edu gamify the game uh, gamify the concept of uh, blockchain learning basically people who would learn to use how to use the metamask how do you send transactions of uh, ether to the network so i know friends who actually uh, moved to ether who started who created their ether account because to because of this game because they wanted to play this game okay so clearly this game has had a positive impact and the second was actually increasing the broad appeal so which is actually this almost similar to point number one um yeah and now moving to the testing part so the team what i really appreciate is how the team um went on with the testing and product launching so they first uh tested a lot and uh, fixed a lot of issues and they had their alpha test on the ethereum waterloo uh, hackathon and they had even won the first prize in the ethereum waterloo hackathon and from there they moved to a beta smart contract a beta contract and in which they found a fatal error and which was uh, so they terminated the contract and after that they launched uh, an early access closed beta and which made uh, the whole project after it was launched in the uh, early access beta to be number three on the whole network mo number three most used project within three hours and it has been only on an upward journey from there on in okay um, so that was really their whole testing process was really nice because with uh, blockchain apps or dapps the trouble is that once something is put on the blockchain it's very it's impossible to change that so if some bug goes to the blockchain then it's impossible to change that okay so that is their their testing process and how they divided the whole testing in stages was uh, is quite uh, commendable then uh, moving to the revenue model so they are not doing an ico clearly and so they charge 3.7 percent uh, of 3.75 percent of each transaction conducted on the marketplace so if i if i'm buying say a cat of 100 uh, rupees 3.7 or 3.75 rupees will be the transaction cost um yeah so three point yeah so basically the whole transaction would cost 103.75 rupees or dollars and uh, <clears throat> yeah so this is how they are uh, earning money and they even earn money through gen zero cat so gen zero ca cats are released every 15 minutes and so they have a auction um, in which the highest bidder gets the gen zero cat and so basically uh, they earn money through that to, to through those 50,000 gen zero cats as well besides of the transaction so that is the revenue model and the last uh, innovation that they had was they uh, introduced two concepts first was non fungible tokens and second was descending clock actions so uh, non fungible token means that um, you all tokens are actually quite unique because uh, like bitcoin and ethereum they are fungible say i have one bitcoin you have uh, another bitcoin these bitcoins can be interchanged and they have almost same they are same basically i if i give you one bitcoin and you give me your bitcoin we would still have one bitcoin and we won't be able to differentiate if which one was the earlier bitcoin okay so that is not going to work in this case because all cats are unique and uh, uh breedable so they they needed to create some some tokens associated with cats which were unique so they have pioneered this erc721 technology which is a non fungible token and i haven't gone to, gone deep to understand what it is but it seems nice and interesting okay and they even have this feature of descending clock action and what descending clock action auction basically uh, refers to is as i've mentioned before we have this graph in which uh, say if something is for sale um then <clears throat> this this one is not for sale so basically if some something is for sale we have uh, this decreasing graph of price uh, so if this cat is for sale so we have this price which which goes from say in this case of the cat 0 0.0696 ether to 0 ether so this is what is decreasing sell auction and this was actually needed uh, mainly because uh, say we have a bidder so if we if we do normal bidding of the cat and we invite a lot of transactions uh, like we invite people to put in how much they are going to pay for the cat so what would happen is on the ethereum network the whole costs are quite a lot and for each transaction to go through for each bidding to go through uh, a cost or gas fees will be associated and maybe say if 10 people bid for the cat there will be um, say uh oh nine people will lo lose transaction money without actually getting the cat and only one person will be able to get the cat so they they have de uh, introduced this descending clock auction in which means that the first one who able who is able to hit uh and hit and buy the uh, cat is is the one who becomes the owner okay so this is all regarding the crypto kitties game uh let me see if something is left um 
yeah and even for breeding they had this um, same procedure in which uh, the owners place their cats available for sale by se selecting a maximum opening bid for si siring and a minimum closing bid okay so that is all regarding the white paper um, and if we go down to this site crypto kitty desk so crypto kitty desk is a site in which uh, we have the cat attributes li listed down cat attributes and how many uh, what is the value of that attribute what is the value of the cat on an average who has that attribute so if we have a royal blue cat kitty um, the value is around 0 0.497 the average price paid for a, a kitty possessing possessing this attribute and there are some uh, like interesting features on the site uh, like um, so basically you can see the visual expression of a genes which is a 256 bit number that encodes traits such as hair color and uh, eye style um, yeah, and I, I recommend to explore the site further. It has some really great features you, which you can uh, like from which you can use to identify rare cats. So these are like you can see rare cats, one of a kind visually distinctive cats and you can see uh, like their intersection. You can like you can intersect with this cat and see how many genes are common with these between these two cats, how which are the genes which are not common between those two cats and what are the gene uh, of, of this particular cat um singularly so this is an uh, interesting site as well okay so this was all mainly regarding the crypto kitties game and now uh, some other things as well so crypto kitties sales actually hit around 12 million dollars uh, and this is an article of december 11th so clearly the number would have written quite a lot risen quite a lot and uh, this has actually this is actually quite a big number 12 million dollars in sale is not a small feat to achieve okay and uh, this is actually the whole if we go to etherscan um, and we find that this is the smart contract of the crypto kitties game and it has around value of something around seventy thousand dollars in it right now or 135 ether and these are the number of transactions that have taken place which is i think one million uh, four hundred two thousand something um yeah and there's this code the solidity code is clearly visible so if you are a hacker and maybe if you want to get rich you can actually figure something out here i think um yeah but i think they, they have tested the code very very deeply and one would not find a mistake here so this is the code which is approximately 2000 lines of code and this is all everything related to the crypto kitties project um and yeah and uh, i even found this article which explained how the whole crossover worked out so if say you had this crypto kitty and this crypto kitty and if they uh bred and if uh in case number one if we used five bits here and four bits of this one we get this one and in the next case we use the first five bits here and the uh next four bits of uh, uh, uh next four bits from here we get this new crypto kitty so and we can form interesting combinations between how to crypto kitties breed and how the new crypto kitten is formed out and this actually gives a lot of uh, new functionality and a lot of randomness associated with the project okay so yeah uh, this was all regarding the crypto kitties uh, project and i hope there are going to be a lot of new projects that are going to come out in the blockchain space uh, on the ethereum platform i'm even planning to build my own and uh, let's see how the whole uh, value of the ethereum network goes up because if so many these kind of applications start building up then the validation of the ethereum network would grow exponentially and the price of ethereum will also shoot up quite a lot okay so yeah uh, this is Arnav signing off and please like the video if you learned something and subscribe to the channel for future videos on blockchain and cryptocurrencies okay bye bye